Hello again, so uh, super alloys, advanced furnace and super alloys. So I have updated my uh, automated furnace and kind of one click ingot creation system to include the advanced furnace and the um, and the super alloys. So uh, I'll do the similar thing as I did in the last video. So I'll take you through how it all looks and then run a couple of examples. So there have been a few changes if you saw my last video. First is a lot more shoots. Shoots were a bit buggy. Uh, they were things were pinging out of them left and right, and it seemed easier to have longer shoots that stopped it. So um, all sorting and selection had to add one extra sorter crowbar in up here for um, cobalt, and an extra hopper over here for cobalt as well. Uh, one of the major differences on this version as to the last version is I've removed um, ices. Uh, it just wasn't it's not worth it having ices on the system it's annoying it requires a bunch of extra stuff and it, taking them out just gave me the space in the ic uh, to make things work a bit better so these three are the ices which uh, i haven't bothered to update and this one's uranium uranium doesn't get used for anything so i haven't updated that one either so you dump any ores you want in here and they get sorted through uh, into these various storage hoppers so you've got copper there you've got some gold i think i want iron uh, so we can see um, they're all getting held nicely and ready to be um, chucked out. Got all of our IC here. And um, so it's up to seven IC chips to control all this now, although one of them is just the status stuff. Um, the main controls here for the selection, uh, the list of alloys that we're able to create or, and uh, regular ingots. Uh, more shoots for um, the cues into the furnace because I found out that when there's some, you know, a shoot is too small on the queue to the furnace while it's waiting to smelt things, then things can ping out all over the place, and it did that to be nice and long as well. Um, and then our advanced furnace. So uh, let's crack on with an example. So the first thing we'll do is we'll do some gold. So we set our type dial to number two. We'll do a run of uh, two gold, I think. So that will be a hundred grams of gold. We hit our activate button. Our light goes yellow to show that something's in progress. We can fly over here and see our gold running in all the way. And that is now waiting to go into the furnace. And you can see the furnace is lit up and is started doing things. So the gold just gets let out of uh, this storage hopper here and just gets dumped into this chute system uh, when requested. Hopefully we will uh, get all of that smelted shortly. And there we go, the lever has been pulled. Our light will hopefully turn green once it's all sorted. Yep, the light's gone green, so we're back ready to start again. And we're just waiting for the gold to come around the chute system and boom, output. 100 grams of gold. Beautiful. Okay, so we've done a regular ore. Let's do um, an alloy. So let's do Invar, why not? Invar's number 10. We'll just do a single run of Invar, so that'll be 100 grams of Invar. Press the button. Okay, there goes the things we need to make Invar. Get the light out of the way because it's all reflecty. And the lever has been pulled. And now we wait. Green light. light on. And a hundred grams of Invar. Sorted. Okay, so the last thing to do is a super alloy. So let's do... Um, Wasp alloy or wasp alloy, however you pronounce that. Number 17, because I've got lots of nickel, but I don't have a lot of cobalt. So uh, this is going to be 200 grams because it's um, three uh, three different ingredients, 100 nickel, 50 silver, and 50 lead for uh, kind of a single run. So we'll do one of those and go. We've got much tighter temperature and... Um, pressure requirements on these. They go all four of our reagents. So we have to see now whether we can meet those uh, those requirements. So it 
should take a little bit longer than the uh, the previous smelting jobs because first there's more reagents, so it takes longer for all, all those reagents to uh, to smelt. When those reagents do smelt, they produce gases and things of their own, which changes the pressure and the temperature. So once everything is settled, then the temperature needs to jig up and down a bit to uh, find the required value. That might take one or two jumps, uh, just because that, that pressure will start off quite high because of all the additional uh, gases from the smelting process. And then it will drop off quite rapidly. go the lever has been pulled you will have noticed actually that the, the temperature listed there and the pressure listed there weren't actually within the bounds of waspaloy uh, i don't know if that's because there's a synchronization issue between the update of those screens and the update of the um the uh the furnace but as you can see it worked 200 grams of uh, waspaloy or waspaloy so yeah and that uh, works for all of the um the super alloys uh, except for Stellite, I haven't tested Stellite yet because I haven't got enough cobalt. <laughs> it's too hard to find. Um, but all the others work, so there's no reason that Stellite shouldn't. Okay, the last thing to show is what happens when we have an error. So let's go um, and put uh, Stellite in, number 16, and we'll go whack up the requirements because basically we're going to need a lot of cobalt, of which I don't have enough. So we'll press the button here, and you'll see it will start... Um, dropping stuff out but now it's gone red because it's basically gone I've tried to drop um, some cobalt there wasn't any to drop oh we've got a problem then what happens is you can see everything just gets shot through the furnace it's coming all the way back and it gets fed back into the system uh, the light has gone green so the system has self-corrected if the furnace was too hot so for instance we were on a second run uh, the ores would get stopped at this point until the furnace had cooled down then that would get unlocked and it would get flushed through to make sure nothing gets smelted on route and turned into a reagent. So you don't lose any of your uh, your items if something is wrong or you've miscalculated the number of things you need. It just all gets fed back into the system and uh, the error handles itself nicely. Okay, as I did before, let's do the technical run through. So like I said, we've got um, all of our sorters around here. Um, all go in here and get sorted uh, out into individuals where they pass through a stacker each so we're only ever putting um, f stacks of 50 into our storage hopper which makes the maths easy uh, I had to put this weird drop in uh, because for some reason stackers are doing weird stuff where they're just throwing um, ores out the sides so putting a, 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 a drop into an inlet seemed to fix that it's not ideal but it does the job um, anything that gets dropped in here that is not uh, an ore will get spat out of the outlet tube and this tube here is where our ingots or our outputs from the um, uh, the furnace come so they shoot around here and get uh, dropped into um, here where if they're ores from a failure they get um, redistributed back into the storage hoppers and if it's an ingot then it will come out the, uh, the output over here computer there is just for setting up all of the um, the sorters because that makes life easy so now we have all of these outlets here so each of these outlets is for one ore. you can see this one is called copper this one's called gold this one's called iron lead etc um, you also notice they are all wired up because they're all controlled by the logic that allows me to drop one ore at a time uh, we have our type dial for selecting the type as we saw quantity dial for selecting the number of runs we want light up here just telling us how things are going activate button for starting something and this tells us the uh, number of output in grams that we're going to get so there are six uh, sorry seven ICs controlling all this and two memory so these three ICs up here are called the shoot controls um, these basically each control four or these two control four shoots each and this one controls um, two shoots so this one will control copper gold iron and lead this one will control nickel, 
uh, silicon, silver, and coal, and this one controls uranium and cobalt. So they will allow me to drop one ore at a time. Uh, this selection uh, or selection control here um, is what actually puts into a stack the different combinations of ores that I need. So, for instance, if I've chosen uh, wasp alloy, then on the stack within this IC would be added uh, a quantity of one silver, a quantity of two nickel, and a quantity of one uh, lead, assuming we're doing a, a run of one. Um, and then those will uh, cycle through passing messages via these memories here um, to these, which would then run them. And they'll, they'll reduce the quantity, and when the quantity gets to zero, uh, this will pop the stack and move on to the next one until there's nothing left on the stack, at which point this sends a message back via the memory to the main control to say right we've we've selected all of our ores everything's working let's start going so the main select system control here is where the bulk of the logic is mostly used up in terms of space uh, it sets all the required temperatures and pressures for each of the ores where necessary it controls um, some of the furnace uh, logic it takes in the quantity and the type dials uh, the activate button and it sets the the memory and it tells the furnace when to start heating State, the system lighting control, the status control here, literally just causes this light to update and this uh, this quantity display to update um, based on the thing selected. And the furnace heat control is the thing that actually tells the furnace to go. So whenever one of the or these memories are kind of above 100, so we're talking temperatures rather than types and uh, pressures rather than quantities, then this kicks in and starts uh, heating and cooling the furnace until... Um, these numbers have dropped back down to uh, to zero. So as you saw, all of the um, ores get dropped out. They then get held at this point uh, until everything is ready to go. So if there was an error, they would get held at this point until we worked out what was wrong and then it would all get flushed through when the furnace was ready to let things pass through. Um, otherwise, this gets unlocked when the furnace gets unlocked uh, and um, it allows things to pass through only when they're ready to pass through, at which point they then get queued up into the furnace. There's a couple of logics back here that basically just replicate the lock on the furnace into the lock on the chute. So if the furnace is locked, then the chute is locked, and if the furnace is unlocked, then the chute is unlocked. Um, just allows me to hold things until I'm ready for them. Uh, we no longer need volume pumps to push things in and out of the advanced furnace because the advanced furnace has its own volume pumps. So that's where the logic changes have happened as well. So we're using these volume pumps to take in fuel and outgas into our outgas system here. Uh, this logic just uh, moves the gas from my uh, waste storage into my atmospheric plant over there once it's cool enough. Um, and then once everything's finished um, and we've calculated the correct number of um, reagents is in the furnace and the temperature and pressure meet the right requirements. Leave gets pulled, everything gets spat out around there and comes out over there. So that's how it works. Um, I'll put the code up in GitHub like I did the last one if anyone wants to see it. Uh, and if you've got any questions, queries, quibbles, give me a shout. But otherwise, uh, yeah, this was uh, not as hard to get working as I thought it would be. So that's good.